Hello and welcome to our tutorial video on the Focusrite Control 24. In this video, we'll be setting up and getting used to Pro Tools and, in the process, learning some handy tips and tricks to get editing like a pro in no time. So without further ado, let's get started. When first setting up, it's important to remember to make sure that your session parameters are correct for your setup. When booting up a new session in Pro Tools, make sure that your bit and sample rates are set to your preferences and that your I.O. settings are correct. This is arguably the most important section, as without the correct setup, you won't have much sound, if any. With this selected, we'll have to find a place to save with a suitable name. You won't believe how many folders I've got called just new song. With your new session open, it's a good exercise to switch between the mix and arrange windows. A simple way to do this is Command Plus. Now, get some new tracks. Another helpful shortcut is Shift Command N, saving you some time and stressful mouse movement. These new tracks will have selections to make them mono or stereo amongst others, and to even change them from audio to other types of tracks like auxiliaries and MIDI. Now, we know the obvious parts, adjusting mic gain and selecting mic or line inputs, but phantom power? Maybe a little elusive for first timers, but it's sat just below the 8th and 16th inputs on the back of the desk. Now, it's important to remember that the phantom power works in bands of 8 channels. Now, it's time to get ready to get some signal coming through. Remember to double check your I.O. on the tracks just to be safe. If your I.O. settings are correct, you're still not having any luck, maybe you should check your playback engine is in the correct selection. When selecting the right one, Pro Tools will restart, so don't panic when it shuts down all of a sudden. Not that I did or anything. Hopefully now you'll have some playback. It's important to consider fallback as well, for those times where walking back and forth from the live space is too much for your legs to handle. Setting it up is super easy too. Make sure that all the tracks you want to send to the fallback are sent to a bus, and then create a new auxiliary track. With this track, Make sure that the input is the bus that you've sent everything to, and then simply route the output to headphone, and there you have it. Now you can use the talkback to chat to your live performance and tell them how good, or bad, they're doing. We'll skip along a bit, and at this point you've recorded some top class audio, but traversing through it all seems a little tiresome. Here's a couple of useful tips for you. Holding command with the dial will let you go back and forth through the recording with ease, and if your waves are looking a little small, Hold ALT when using the dial to zoom in and out. If you just need to get to the start or the end of the recording though, simply press GO TO and the respective location. Easy. At this point, it's good to remember about the transport selections. They'll help you with editing. For example, the grid option, as it kind of entails, lets you snap to the grid, which is useful for timed edits if you're familiar with the recording. On the other hand, the slip function allows for movement through the timeline without having to be stuck to the timeline itself. Good for edits that aren't on the beat. Now we've recorded audio and we want to do some editing. Before this, it's good to get some groups set up, as this can make levelling a whole lot easier. To set up a group, simply press the create button in the group section and then hit track select on the tracks you wish to add to that group. When finished, name your groups appropriately, and then it's all done for you. Now you can watch your group move in unison. Now, throwing on some processing to your sounds can be super useful, and can make the difference to tracks to give them that pro sound. Man, who writes this garbage? Let's have some EQ, compression, and reverb on this track, just to demonstrate. Selecting the plugin button on the Windows section of the desk will bring up and hide the last plugin accessed. If you press inserts on the channel you wish to edit, then the switch active button related to which insert you want to use, you can then manipulate the on-screen insert only using the desk. And there we have it. Well, I hope you've got some sweet tips and tricks and that Pro Tools isn't so daunting to you anymore. You'll be on your way to editing like a pro in no time. Thank you for watching. 